How about that? Some of them are simpler than others. Hopefully they'll be pretty easy. We're going to kind of put these two, those two Stanford guys together to kind of uh, make some back and forth this. All right, any questions before we start? Awesome. So the first project we built was just a battery and a light bulb and a switch. And so we can say the switch and light bulb are related to how? They're in what? And how do we know that? There's no parallel. There's only one path. There's only one path. Additionally, a series circuit is, I think, easily yeah. defined if you know that all the charge goes through L1 also goes through S1, then these two things are in series. There's no branch in between. They're not in series. Actually, neither of them are here. I bet they're taking AP tests. Oh. But you probably can't bother them. You do a great job. Keep it up. <laughs> yeah, both these things just gave me fun. So, bulb and switch are in series. Every charge goes to the bulb and to the switch. I know they're in series. If I close the switch, what happens? The circuit starts running. So that gives us a complete loop for the charge to run through. Um, we said these two things are in series. And which means there's a potential across the battery. And so we know batteries create this potential difference on the negative end of the negative potential, positive end of the positive potential, and that's what causes the charge to flow. Um, what we're going to talk about a lot today is climbing a mountain. The electrons in the battery, when they come out the bottom of the battery, the electrons they climb a mountain. They need to gain three volts as they go around the circuit. They're going up the mountain. Some of your hiker go up the mountain, gain potential energy as they go up the mountain. Same thing with electrons. They're going to gain energy as they go around, and that's what we'll discuss today. And the difference in potential is how much they gain as they go around the loop. In this case, we're, we'll say 3 volts today. A lot of times in our measurements, we have 2.5 volts because your regular alkaline batteries you buy in the store that aren't rechargeable are 1.5 volts each, and that's what these pictures all assume. Rechargeables are 1.2-ish volts each, so most of our measurements had 2.5 volts for the potential difference, and that's why there's a discrepancy. Uh, I don't officially know why the charge bolts have less voltage. I have some theories, but it's not particularly important. Possibly. Um, and so let's look at the video. Maybe. This was the first setup we're going to put together. It's like magic now. So did you record yourself? I did. Why is it any easier to do yourself like right now? Because I, I can look at you while it's happening right now. Mm. You got two batteries, you got a wire, or a switch, blood bowl, and I think wires go back to the There we go. Big magic. You can just connect them and it's great. I thought you might need to use it. So I'm going to close the switch now, and we'll see the uh, electrons start to flow. Electrons go from the negative end up around to the positive, climbing up their mountain. Uh, you've got a lot of room. Yeah. What did you ask, Crystal? Electrons always leave the negative. That's correct. We draw it that way. Correct. What is your problem here? Hey, you have the same background that uh, what's his face does? Mr. Uh, Mr. Moore? Yeah. The astronomy picture of the day? Yeah. Do you go that side every day? No, uh, just, up, just updates. He shows that every day. Yeah, just updates. So electrons in the circuit, electrons all com compile themselves at the bottom of the battery. The negative end of the battery has a bunch of extra electrons, and if a bunch of negative charges together, they want to repel each other. That's why the electrons leave the negative side of the battery. Um, so electrons always want to go from a low potential up to a high potential. Today we're talking about how the electrons want to climb a mountain. They want to climb from the bottom of the mountain, which is negative potential, low potential, up to the top of the mountain, which is the highest potential. Um, all electrons always make the same climb. So if you have a potential difference of three volts in your power source, by the time an electron gets through the circuit, it's gone up three volts in potential. There might be a different pass that it takes, but every electron makes that same plan. 
We're not going to discuss anything else. <laughs> and all the potential from a battery is used. And the what means in a second. But that means if the battery has three volts, eventually throughout the device, three volts have to get used up. Uh, in series, we had a setup we drew like this and made some measurements. We had two uh, power sources, either three volts or two and a half, depending on what battery you're using, and one light bulb L2. Uh, and we should have measured each potential across the batteries, and they were like uh, three volts. We're going to say they're three volts each. In series, we're going to add these two things together. And so across the light bulb, you should have measured about a difference of six volts or possibly five to use rechargeable volts across the battery. Whatever these two numbers were, whatever these two numbers were, should have added up to the drop across the light bulb. Is that what we had? Our packets? So if a series potential differences are going to add up together, give you a larger potential difference. So it's two pushes, add together to make one big push. I'm going to sit down and talk. So the total difference is what we say dropped across L2. We'll often talk about what the protons do because people brains like that better. And protons go from the top of the mountain down to the bottom. So often we have this great potential drop that people throw around. That just means that across this gap, uh, five volts is dropped from the protons. Um, it gets kind of weird. People say different things. If you ever see the word potential drop, that's the same as potential difference across an element. But again, the point here is if I start with five or six volts of potential over here, some point in the circuit, all five volts need to get used up. So if I start with five volts over here or six volts, or we're going to say, and then six volts got used up on that light bulb. So that's the only thing that they're taking away. Think of the potential maybe as like the uh, EK of the electrons. They're moving through the circuit. The light bulb takes the uh, EK and turns it into like electrical energy in a form of light. And it all gets used. The electrons don't get used up. They're still there. And the electricity doesn't really get used up, whatever that would mean. But kind of the energy gets used up by the bulb before it gets back around to the Questions? Comments, concerns? Oh, oh, this is the other one you did. Potential in series again. You have two battery sources. These are each three volts. That means a total of six to start with. You go across two light bulbs. So in some combination, the potential across each light bulb has to add back up to six by the time you're done. And that should have been supported by the data you collected. If you look at your packet. Uh, Laura. So the combined batteries and the like should be the same as the combined light. Right, so we might say something like the sum of the drops, which would be the light bulb, equals the sum of the source. Why are the light bulbs called drops? Uh, because if we think about what a proton would do, a proton is going downhill. And so some people would say that the proton starts with like six volts of potential, and it loses four there, and it loses two there. Okay, so so it's even though the proton dropping. doesn't actually move? Some people say it as drops. Yeah. That wasn't my decision. <laughs> I know, me neither. That's another way to say it as well. Uh, but the idea is that whatever potential you start with, you have to use all of it up in the circuit. Different drops are okay, or different potential used or lost is different for different elements. Project 2, very similar to Project 1, we had a fan and a switch. We closed the uh, switch, the fan turned on, they're in series together. Um, does the fan stop when I turn the switch off? Why not? Momentum or inertia keeps the fan spinning. Obviously, motion wants to stay in motion. So no, because of inertia. I think we can watch another video about that. I could be wrong. I heard you. It's all good. What did you what program did you use to capture yeah. called Cam Studio? Okay. It's free now. Yeah. So again we're, we're two batteries. We see project one still sitting there for oh, the crazy thing. The thing we are? The crazy thing. There's a fan of the switch, put some wires in between, 